Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our review of the Brooks Catamount 2. Catamount 2 is a trail shoe from Brooks. It's built more for hard trails, hence the uh, lugs on the outsole not being especially deep. Obviously it's the second version of the shoe and Brooks has made some fairly big changes, inserting a new plate into the front foot and reducing the weight of the shoe across the board. It costs £160 in the UK, $170 in the US. It weighs in at 277 grams or 9.7 ounces in my UK size 9. Uh, it's got a six millimeter drop from heel to toe. There's no stack height given by Brooks, but it looks around 30 millimeters at the heel or so. So the Catamount 2 is a bit lighter than the first version of the Catamount, which was still a pretty lightweight trail running shoe. It's interesting to me that it's dropped in weight because it looks almost like a more built up shoe than the first version, but it does use very light materials across the board. One of the big new updates is the new Sky Vault plate in the forefoot of the shoe. Brooks mentions this as a propulsive plate to help you get up hills, but really it feels more like a rock plate, just something that's there to protect the feet from a rough surfaces underneath. It hasn't really given us much pop on the run. You've got a DNA flash midsole, that, that's Brooks's nitrogen infused EVA foam. It's the stuff used on the Hyperion range of road running shoes, a nice lightweight, responsive foam, uh, not too squishy, so still quite stable on the trails. And you've got these side walls of foam here that your foot sits within this kind of little jagged edges there that helps with stability. The upper's been revamped from the first version as well to give it a more secure fit around the midfoot in particular. You've got a toe bumper there, decent amount of structure at the heel to create stability and a little bit of padding around the collar and tongue. Not too much, this is still designed to be quite a lightweight trail shoe. A trail tack, a rubber outsole that has four millimeter lugs. They're quite closely spaced and fairly large and flat. They're not really built to bite into soft ground so much. They're more for harder surfaces, providing good grip and a comfortable smooth ride on harder trails but there's a little bit of lug depth there to try and help you stay upright if you do stray into any mud. Okay, I've been joined by Tom now, who's also been testing the Brooks Catamount 2. Let's start with a bit of a chat about fit, Tom. Does the shoe fit? I'm a size 8. This is a size 8 shoe. I would stick to a size 8, although I would say that it's slightly narrow. I don't normally have a problem with narrow shoes, but I did notice it was a slightly narrow shoe. Yeah, I'm true to size in the shoe as well, across the board. I'm looking now at the uh, USA, European, and UK sizing here. They're all my normal size, UK 9, EU 44, US 10. No problems at all with fit. I didn't find it narrow, but I have a very narrow foot, so I've got no concerns about narrow shoes. Held me well at the heel. Yeah, everything was fine in my normal running shoe size. Same size I have for all my Brooks Road shoes as well. Run test! Uh, Tom, you had this shoe first. Yeah. Uh, talk about your running experiences with the Brooks Cat of the Mountain. So I have done probably about 50k of this shoe and that has varied between uh, runs around the trails in a park in Brighton. Not 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 particularly difficult trails, uh, but I've also been on the downs of it as well. Um, and I think it's a solid shoe for, for, for those runs. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't feel like there was a run that I did that it couldn't handle equally though i didn't feel like it I, that, there's like a standout thing about this shoe it just felt like a solid trail shoe that did the job um i'd probably say that uh, i know there's a there's a design feature in this which I, I mentioned to you earlier about the fact that it's sort of got this plate that's, that helps you run up hills the sky plate the sky, the sky vault plate. sky vault which i i definitely didn't feel like it was helping me run up hills and the downs have some quite big hills in them um, it wasn't bad at running up hills. It just did just the same as any other shoe that's uh, that, I've, that I've been using on the downs. I think there's a bit of a rocker in this as well. Uh, I didn't really notice it, um, but yeah, in in all of those runs that I did, uh, I didn't really run in any wet conditions um, because it's been quite nice here while I've been testing this. Um, but I didn't have any issues with grip or anything, and I just found it to be fine. I also think it's a pretty good road to trail shoe as well. Um, so when I do the road the, the runs in the parks around here. I have to get to them and it's about two and a half K to get to them and it was fine for those. I think that DNA flash midsole, it's a bit firmer than you, what you get in most road shoes, but it's still a bit softer than I'd expect from um, a trail shoe. I think the, the previous catamount was a bit harder, a bit firmer than this, or so I've been told. <laughs> well, I, I had the previous catamount and um, I liked it a lot. At the time, I thought it was a really good shoe. It was one of the first shoes that brought these kind of road running shoe foams to the trails. It was pretty lightweight, it looked pretty cool. Uh, I liked it as a speedy trail shoe with not too much grip, a nice summer trail shoe maybe. Um, used it for a 10k race once and really liked it. And then it feels like this is another shoe where Brooks has made quite a good shoe. Left it a few years for other people to make 
quite a lot of better shoes, come back with an update that doesn't really you know, put them ahead again, like, leaves them more or less where they were in the market, I think. Like they've added a little bit to the shoes, made it actually a little bit lighter, despite the fact it seems looks more built up than the first version. Kept the outsole the same, added the Sky Vault, like Sky Vault, that's a name, isn't it? It's like a Ben Affleck film, <laughs> Sky Vault. Um, and I really like the look of the shoe, I love the speckling in particular, but the ride hasn't really come on, I don't think. And it's a good ride and it's a decent speed shoe, but for me, it almost ends up falling in between um, really speedy shoes, like really lightweight trail shoes that you know are built just for speed and then comfortable cushy shoes that are only a little bit heavier than this, but actually I'm a lot more comfortable. So recently I've been testing out the Saucony Exodus 2, the Saucony Peregrine uh, 13, other shoes tested recently like the Innovate, Trailfly and all those. I just feel like they're shoes that do pretty much everything the Catamount does whilst having better grip and a bit more comfort in many cases as well. So I've done you know some easier runs in the shoe. I've done one harder, longer run, like progressing the pace and finishing, you know, running sub six minute miles on undulating terrain and, it, and it's fine like it does that okay but like i didn't feel much pop from this the sky vault plate up here i think it's really just a rock plate um it doesn't give you a huge amount of bounce compared to some of the other foams that are now appearing in trail shoes it's a decent stable base it's lightweight but yeah it's just not enough of anything to really stand out and then probably the bigger problem for me is the grip which is fine right now it's a summer shoe where i am uh, in the uk but it's not grippy enough really for um wet trails at all and that's gonna be a problem and then i think actually if you're looking at using it purely on hard trails it's fine it's, it's not that comfortable i think there are more comfortable shoes out there so if you're just hammering out long runs on harder ground i think you'd probably find a more comfortable shoe than this and at the same time it's not that lightweight so you wouldn't say oh you know it's a brilliant 5k 10k trail shoe because it's so lightweight it's, it's pretty good at those it's not that lightweight and then at the same time it's not that comfortable that i'd go oh i'd love to use this for a marathon on hard ground so but i do think it's a good road to trail shoe uh, i did like i agree on that i think it grips well it's got fairly nice smooth lugs there that give a nice ride on the road so although i liked using it it just it feels like a missed opportunity they could have gone really lightweight or they could have made it a bit more comfortable and they're not really done anything with this shoe i think that really puts it at the front of the market again when it's quite expensive as well mm. that's the problem isn't it um, yeah, I, I, I think that if you picked up the shoe, you were not going to be disappointed in it. But equally, there's better shoes. Um, yeah. But yeah, I definitely didn't mind running in it. Um, and uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing stood out for me about it. Yeah, nice summer, shoe. nice summer look as well. I get this is a shoe I wouldn't mind taking on holiday because I like the look of it. It might be a bit much for some. Yeah, I'm not that bothered. It's all right. <laughs> Right, verdict then on the Catamount 2. Uh, Tom, buying the shoe. Any other shoes you'd recommend ahead of it? So I think this is a, this. the Catamount 2 comes in a market, we mentioned it a bit earlier, where there's a lot of other shoes and they're doing a very similar thing. So there's shoes like the Saucony Peregrine range and the design of the Peregrine is almost the same as this, but I think it just has more standout elements. I think the lugs are better on the Peregrine. The Peregrine is also a very good road to trail shoe. I can't remember which one they're on. What are we on now, Peregrine? 12? 13. Uh, so the per Peregrine I always find with that is that it's a very good road to trail shoe, but it also is pretty formidable on the mud as well when it gets a bit wet in, in the winter, whereas this isn't. So I think there's there's shoes like that that are just a bit better than this shoe. Um, and then also when you're looking at, if, you, if you're looking at this as a shoe to buy and you go, oh, there's a plate in it. Oh, that's going to be great for running fast over the trails. There's Equally, there's better options as well. Um, so you've got things like the Saucony Endorphin Edge, which I'd prefer to use over this. A bit more expensive, but I do think it, that plate actually has a, an impact on the run. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Don't look at this as a plated shoe, as like the, the Edge, the Tecton, the, uh, even the Summit Vective Pro from North Face. Those, those calm plates are built a bit more for propulsion. This is doesn't seem to have that. Maybe they talk about it on uphills, but again, I didn't really know. It's not bad uphills. It's a pretty lightweight trail shoe, but it's not great. You know, it's not outstanding. And yeah, it doesn't add a lot of punch when you're running fast on good runnable trails. It, the grip maybe isn't there if you're a soft ground person. I often in soft ground myself. And then if you are on hard ground, I think it maybe isn't the cushiest shoe. <laughs> so yeah, like I say, it falls in between lock categories. I like I say, I think it's a good shoe. I, I like using it. I think a lot of people will pick it up and use it. If you're on dry trails all the time, it's going to be completely fine. It's reasonably light. It's got that decent foam there, that DNA flash foam, but it doesn't really stand out. And I think some shoes do that cost less as well. Like the Saucony Exodus 2, my favorite new trail shoe, absolutely loving it. It's got a ride that has decent stability, lots of comfort, but a little bit of bounce from Saucony's Power Run PB foam, a road foam in a trail shoe that just gives it more oomph. And I found that easier to run fast in that shoe, even though it's a little bit heavier than the Catamount and it's got better luck. So, I mean, it's reasonably lightweight. I think one of the reasons it's lighter than lots of other shoes is just because it, it has shallow lugs. And all those Saucony, Saucony shoes have 
four, five, six millimeter lugs in them, just give you that extra grip while still being pretty lightweight midsole foam. So yeah, I, I know, I like the shoe. I like the Catman, I really liked the first one at the time. I just feel like second version hasn't moved on enough to really justify its price and its place yeah. in the market. Well, I think it's if, if you set this back to 2018, people would have been blown away with it. Yeah. It's just now it's like, <laughs> yeah, we've got, we've got stuff like that now. There's just so many shoes out there, so many travel shoes that have found really good ways to incorporate foams from road running shoes while still being stable and comfortable and having grip. And yeah, yeah the Catamount just feels good, but maybe not good enough that yeah. I can recommend buying. If, if, if it becomes uh, in the next year, if it gets cheap in the sales, I'd, I'd, I would say to people, it's probably if you, if you could pick it up for like, you know, 80 quid or something, I think it would be a good shoe then. Um, mm. But yeah, at the current price, I wouldn't suggest buying it over other shoes. Yeah, I think they can either go really max out the stack, add a full plate in it, try that route, or I think they could try stripping it back a bit and go, well, we're not really going for ultra-level comfort here, but we've made it lower stack. It is now very lightweight and a good foam. Maybe that could be something interesting in it. Mm. But at the moment, it's just a good shoe, not necessarily one that's great.